Hello, Nuggets. All right. All right. I mean, what have I kept this voice going for the whole thing? So I've been thinking about what I'm going to do with FM21, right? So um, usually what I do is lower league saves, right? Because I don't really enjoy doing the championship, premiership, or higher league in any of the leagues. Um, it just doesn't interest me. It does if I take the club there, right? That's different. But just walking into those jobs, I don't know, just it's not as interesting. The, the, lower, the challenges in lower leagues are way more interesting. So I know that my save is going to be lower league right oh here's the thing i'm going to be getting the pre-release and so when i get the pre-release i'm going to be doing some videos on that but that's not going to be my main save i'm just going to do those so you get a chance to see what it's like and whether you want to buy it and stuff like that just dipping into various bits and pieces playing with the database stuff like that whenever the actually the database won't come out on the pre-alpha but pre-release but i'll be playing around with it and doing some videos this is about the main save once it, the game gets fully released on november 24th this is what i'm going to do so it's going to be lower leagues. And I think what I'm going to do this time is a creator club, right? So this new series, YouTube series, is going to be called uh, Fail Like Me. And there's a reason for that. Um, I'm going to do a creator club and manage that team as authentically as I can. So it's not just the creator club is obviously not authentic. But I've always wanted, I'll give you the reasons why I do uh, creator club. The thing is, when I play football manager i do not play it authentically i have i turn off the player attribute masking i use the player search and the star search and all of that i use all of the tools at my disposal to figure out whether or not that player is what i want them to do right whether they're going to fit the role that i want them to fit and it makes it's like playing the game on easy mode it's admittedly it's not easy i'm not saying that but it's easier and it's not authentic so I'm going to try something. I'm going to get rid of that concept and play it with all of the barriers that should be in place in place. And I'm probably going to fail. So that's why I'm calling it fail like me. All right. Create a club fail like me. That's what it's going to be. Now then, what's the club? Okay. So when I play football manager, uh, I like to play something that's close to home. I know a lot of people will recognize this. And I have three areas in England. I left in 1996. But I still have three areas in England that I consider home, right? That that just kind of tug on my heartstrings and make me miss going to the pub and stuff like that. Uh, one of them is Streatham. The other one is Stepney. And the, other, the last one is Lodsworth, which is a little town near Midhurst in West Sussex. Right, so in Streatham, I was in Streatham when my mum... Um, who was a famous actress in England, when she got her first really good job, which was in the O'Neillian line, she bought a house, a cheap house in Streatham. Uh, and we lived on Nollies Road in Streatham. And then we moved after a few years to a house on Valley Road, also in Streatham, down near the common, uh, down near Streatham Common. So Streatham to me is, really feels very close to my heart. Then we moved when my mum met my current stepfather, Fred, we moved to the east end of London, which is where he liked. He liked that area. We moved to an area called Stepney. And uh, so that feels like home because my teenage years were spent in Stepney. And then when my mum and stepfather decided to get out of London, they sold that place and they moved out to Lodsworth. I'd already left the house at this point. I wasn't living with them. I was like 16, 17. But they moved out into this place called Lodsworth in West Sussex. Beautiful old school house. It was a stunning home. Really beautiful. And I would go down there and stay there. And sometimes I lived there, you know, because I was young and I fucked up a lot. Um, so Lodsworth also feels like it. The problem with all three of those places is they don't have any teams in the English lower leagues. Uh, well, they do in the lower leagues, but in the, say, the Vanaramas, you know, in the Vanarama, the National League, North and South. Uh, obviously South, not North. Um, they have some that are close. So the closest one is Dulwich Hamlet in Streatham. The thing is, I can't take over Dulwich Hamlet because I love Dulwich Hamlet and I want them to be my rival. I don't, I don't want to take, over, take them over and say, like, there is no more Dulwich Hamlet in any of these leagues. There is just my club. Um, but I love them and I want them to be rivals. So that kind of solidifies the team I'm going to do. It's going to be Streatham, right? I'm going to create a club in Streatham. They're going to be called the St. Retham Commoners. <laughs> and the reason they're called... St. Retham is my godfather used to call, that's what he used to call Streatham. Because Streatham, you know, when, when I was growing up there, it was a bit of a shithole. 
and it was a bit common, right? Which we fit in. We were right. We were perfect for it. But in order to make it sound more upgraded, he would call it St. Retham. Lovely man, Francis. He died a few years ago. But he always used to call it St. Retham. So in honor of him, um, who shaped my humor and my life so much, I'm going to call them the St. Retham commoners. Um, and our rivals are going to be Dulwich Hamlet. And I love Dulwich Hamlet. I actually went to school in Dulwich for a while before I just stopped going altogether. Um, at a, a really posh school called Alain's because my mum was making money then. And I left that super posh school because I just didn't go for like 18 months. And they moved me to John Cass in Stepney when we moved, which was literally the worst school in London. Like literally the worst school in London. It was the bottom of every single thing. I think they were going to get closed down. So I ended up moving to John Cass School, um, but I never went there either, so it didn't make any difference. I was getting into trouble at that age. I was like 15, hadn't been to school for a year, was getting into trouble. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. So I'm going to do St. Retham. It's going to be the St. Retham Commodus, and it's going to be a hard save where I'm probably going to fail. Here are the rules of the save. Okay. We will be based on a very low level Vanarama South Club. So what happens is when you do a creator club, you can, I think, just choose every player that you're going to take. But who's going to do that? Because I don't want to do that because I'm always going to pick good ones. I can't deliberately pick bad players. That's a weird thing. I'm just going to take over a club and I'm going to take what they have. Now, ideally, I'm going to take one close to Streatham. Unfortunately, the closest one is Dulwich Hamlet, but I'm not taking them over. But I'm going to try and take... Uh, a club that at least is reasonably close. There are a couple of Vanarama South teams that are uh, like getting northish, you know, or all the way over towards Cornwall, <laughs> Devon, and stuff like that. I'm going to try and keep it at least reasonably local, and I'm not going to shoot myself in the foot here. So I, uh, or I'm not going to give myself an easy break. So I'm not going to take a super rich club. And I'm not going to take a completely broken club with no squad. I'm going to take something in the middle, but I don't want to take one where the media think they're going to finish first or second. That just, it doesn't feel like a challenge to me. My ideal club is one that is going to be local to Streatham, reasonably local to London at least, right? Yeah, London's good enough. Um, the, the finances are all right. And they have a squad that could play. It might only be 12 players. But they could field a team. There are a couple of teams when you do create a club, you notice like they don't even have any defenders. They literally don't have one defender. How can this team play? I'm not doing that. It's just that's also not authentic. Since there's no teams out there with no defenders. They have defenders. Um, so I'm going to be taking over something. In a perfect world, it would also the media prediction would be like 20th or 24th. Bottom's fine, right? Um, but I want to pick a team that really doesn't expect it to do well because it makes the save more exciting and more challenging. And frankly, if I were going to manage a team, that's the only thing, they're the only kind of team that would hire me. And they wouldn't. That's obviously not authentic. But given the context and the scale, I'm not going to get, um, I'm not going to get approached by Bitter Ricky, you know, who've got loads of money. It's not going to work like that, right? It's going to be the St. Reith and Commoners. So they're going to have no money and they're going to just be in a nightmare dire situation and I'm going to pop up and go, I'll, I'll do it for free. There you go. Okay, so based on the Vanarama South Club, fairly close to Streatham's actual location. Okay, attribute masking will be on. So we're not going to see any of the players. I use that a lot in my saves. Off, rather. I see the attributes. Because I like to play on easy mode because I like the success and I've realized... Yeah, it's boring. <laughs> it's actually not boring to play, but if I'm going to stream it, if I'm going to YouTube it, it's going to get frustrate you people because you're like, well, you can't do all that. You're just, you're cheating the game, right? So I can't just have a scout send me a player, look at them and go, oh, look, their current ability is 60. Their potential ability is 140. Sign that player because that is not the way it works. They're going to be as good as the scout tells me they are. And that's it. I'm only going to get the information I've get from the scouts. And if I think or I have a hunch they're going to be good and I think they fit my role, I'm going to have to scout them more and wait. So attribute masking 100% on. Keep it as, a, um, as authentic as we can. Um, we're also, in that note, we're not going to be changing whatever team we take over. You know, so that's why I won't be picking a team that has only seven players in it or something ridiculous like that. And they're all injured. I can't, just can't do that. Because at the point that we take over the game, they will have basically have mostly established their team. Now, I can add loan players, right? And I can potentially pick up some free transfers 
in the time that I have, but there's no budget in the first window and the team is set. I am taking over this team. They're like, this is what we got. Do what you can with it. Now I will hopefully be loaning better players and I'll be hopefully picking up some little sneaky ones in there and moving stuff around a little bit and moving them up from the lower leagues if they have, or from the, the under 23s, under 18s if they have them or reserves if they have them. Um, but the team that I inherit is basically the team that I get. No changing in the database, no changing before I start the game. Um, as I just mentioned, no budget in the first window. So we're just going to get the team we get. Um, okay, so personally, I'm going to be starting as a base manager. So my current manager that I end up playing in the game um, has experience and he speaks German, French, Spanish, English. Like he's fluent in four languages. Uh, that's, he's also um, a fitness-based manager. <laughs> Relax. Right? So that's not me. And the reason you do fitness is in lower leagues, fitness is probably the most important aspect to your players. So you really want a fitness coach, but most teams only allow you two coaches. So if one of them is just a fitness coach, you're kind of losing a lot. So usually I make myself the fitness coach by just putting all of my attributes into that. Well, we're not doing that because that's not me. Obviously, that's not me. I'm going to make a manager that is my age, my weight, my size, my birthplace, speaks the languages that I speak, which is English. And then also, well, I do actually speak a little French. I speak conversational French, but I don't think the game allows you to do conversational. I think it just does fluent. You know what? If it doesn't, if it only allows fluent, I'm not putting it in. If it allows conversational or something the equivalent for French, I'll do that. But other than that, I'm speaking English. I'm going to be 50 years old. I'm going to be a fat fuck. And um, I'm going to have no qualifications whatsoever. So I'm going to be the lowest they will let me go, which I think still gives you like a few points in e either side. But I'm not going to put it all into fitness. I'm going to put it all into the attributes that I genuinely think I have. For example, I think I'm very good at motivating. Well, I know I am. It's what I do for my job, right? When you're managing a team, I'm very good at motivating, motivating people and getting the best out of them. Um, and then for my coaching side, it's going to have to be mental and tactical because it's not attacking. It's not defending. Although I did used to play as a left winger in little leagues when I was a kid. But that was 43 years ago. Um, 43 something years ago. Uh, but the manager is going to be a base manager. No licenses, Sunday footballer only, and that's it. Speak only the languages I speak, my age, my size, everything. Uh, he'll probably be a tracksuit manager because when you're as fat as I am, you don't try and squeeze this shit into a suit. That's just uncomfortable for everyone and really unreasonable. So I'm going to be just in uh, a tracksuit, trackies, fat trackies. Actually, you know what? Sports Interactives, you should add fat trackies as an option. Um, base manager, let's see. No player search. So this is going to be really hard for me because I use the player search all the time. And I click the little interested in transfer or loan all the time. No player search ever in the game whatsoever. So no matter, even if I take the St. Reith and Commoners up to the Premier League, no player search. Only what the scouts find me. Even if I'm looking for Messi, although he's near retirement now, but whatever. Van Dyke, right? Even if Van Dyke is brought up, um, even though I may know I want exactly that player for my team, I am not using the player search. It's only what's presented to me by the scouts. So no player search whatsoever. Um, that means also that um, my staff are hopefully only going to be unemployed when I begin with, right? So I'm not going to break any contracts when I'm lower leagues because we just, lower league money, teams don't have that money. you got to get an unemployed person. That unemployed person may be absolutely shitty. There's also some little kind of things you can do in the game, which I'm not sure like, so I'll give you an example. With players, if you want to sign a new contract with them and they were previously 200 or a week, just for the sake of argument. The new contract will often cost you 250 a week, right? But if you don't sign them until the season starts or you loan in a player in their position, suddenly they'll say, okay, I'll be the backup for 70 pounds a week. And I use that to my advantage all the time in the game. Well, I'm not going to do it on this one because that's not authentic. No player does that. They're just going to either get pissed off and leave or the manager would say, I can't lose this player. I'm going to keep it. I actually have a save right now 
on FM where I just did that. And I, it was one of those, it was one of those moments where I'm like, that is so cheesy what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm waiting for him to think I'm about to kick him out and then I'm re-signing him. And it just isn't, it's not a natural reaction. So I'm not going to do that kind of stuff. And with the staff, I'm only going to sign unemployed staff. Higher leagues, I can take contracts, fine. But lower leagues. And um, I'm toying with whether or not to not use the staff search. Because I don't know how I would do it without it. I know that once you have staff, they will recommend staff. Right? So... I might do that because that basically means, okay, well, if I join a club that doesn't have an assistant manager, I'm not getting one until the chairman or the one coach I have or whatever says, hey, how about this guy to fill the role? I kind of, that excites me. I really like that idea. It's really fucking hard if you don't have an assistant manager and you don't have coaches. It means you're probably going to not do very well your first season, but it's more authentic. I think in this decision, in this conversation, in this video, I've just decided no staff search. There you go. I will use staff search at the higher le levels. Never play a search. But I will when I get to the higher levels because that is authentic. I mean, obviously, they're going to look for, hey, we need an attacking possessive coach. Go find the best one in the league, you know. Um, whereas with player search, I would never do that. I ask my scouts to do that, right? But I don't think you have any way to have a member of staff look for staff. So I'm going to, at higher leagues, assume that staff search is that person, is my assistant. But never for the player search. Only the scouts can do that. Uh, no pre-built tactics, no downloaded tactics. I never use these anyway, but just to establish it, I'm not going to be using any pre-built stuff. It's all tactics built from the ground up. This also includes set pieces. Now, the game already has built-in set pieces, right? So this is just a memory thing I'm going to have to remember to do, which is to wipe them out. <laughs> I'm not using any pre-built. I have to build all of the set pieces myself for each different tactic I apply. Now, I may reuse. I may decide that my 4-2-2, uh, <laughs> 4-2-2, my eight player, my 4-4-2 uh, corner tactic is the same as my 4-3-3 attacking corner tactic, whatever. Uh, I may use the same tactic for both. But the point is I have to build them from the ground up. Thing is, it already comes with default one, so I just got to remember to do it and then do a video showing you, here's the tactics. This is what I've come up with. Uh, no moving clubs, right? I'm staying with one club until they fire me. If they fire me, that's the end of the save, and we'll start another one. Um, and then the last one was manager will be based on me. All right, I've already covered that. So that's what we're going to do. It's going to be called Create a Club. Club, fail like me. It's going to be St. Reith and Commoners. I'm going to start it on November 24th, as soon as the game is fully out. And... Um, yeah, I'm going to see if it gets any traction. You know, I have almost no viewers. I have like 10 views on a video. And I have 50 subscribers who are all just mates who subscribed a couple of years ago when I asked them to and probably never watched these videos. But I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to see if it gets any energy and any traction. If it does, I'll keep it going. Um, uh, if not, I'll just go back to playing and having fun. All right, that's it, you little nuggets. Watch this space. Bye. Oh, like and subscribe.